Welcome to this short educational video which is titled Guidance for Delivering Very Brief Advice and it's brought to you by the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service. The Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service offers free advice and support for those looking to begin their stop smoking journey. The video is designed to give an insight into the basic principles of how to give very brief advice for stopping smoking. We'll start by discussing the health risks of smoking and the benefits of quitting. We'll then move on to very brief advice itself, including the principles of very brief advice, the evidence base for very brief advice, the three steps of very brief advice, and understand how to apply very brief advice to everyday situations. Finally, we'll learn the pathways and make an appropriate referrals into the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service. By the end of the video, you should feel more confident in delivering very brief advice and have an understanding of how this sort of intervention can be beneficial. You should also feel confident in discussing smoking status with pregnant smokers and smokers with poor mental health. Let's start. What's in a cigarette? A cigarette is much more than tobacco wrapped in paper. The cocktail of chemicals in cigarette smoke comes from different sources when a cigarette is made and used. Over 4,000 chemicals added to the tobacco. Some chemicals are found naturally in the tobacco plant, but other substances are also added for flavour and to make smoking more pleasant. Many of these chemicals in tobacco and cigarette smoke have other surprising uses, as you'll see in the picture on the right-hand side of the screen. As well as the chemicals listed here, most regular cigarettes also contain between 1.2 and 1.4 milligrams of nicotine. Nicotine is a substance in tobacco plants that protects the plant from being eaten by insects. It stimulates dopamine release in the brain, resulting in activation of the brain's reward areas. It's highly addictive, yet compared to other chemicals we listed within the cigarette, it's relatively harmless. Smoking harms your body in many ways. It damages your heart, it damages your brain, ages your skin, and it also weakens your bones. It increases your blood pressure, and it can give you stomach ulcers. It also affects fertility in women and in men. It increases the risk of cancer in your mouth and throat, and causes 84% of all deaths from lung cancer and 83% of all deaths from COPD. COPD accounts for approximately 5% of the total number of UK deaths, and it's nearly always caused by smoking. Here you can see a diagram of a healthy lung, and here you can see some of the effects that COPD causes. Up to 3.7 million people in the UK have it. Unfortunately, most are undiagnosed. There is no cure for COPD, but quitting smoking can slow down the progression of the condition. Secondhand smoke is a mixture of two forms of smoke that come from burning tobacco. There's mainstream smoke exhaled by the smoker and sidestream smoke from the end of a cigarette. Sidestream smoke has smaller particles that make their way into the lungs and the body's cells more easily. People who breathe in secondhand smoke are at risk of the same diseases as smokers. Children are particularly affected by secondhand smoke because their bodies are still developing. And more than 80% of secondhand smoke is invisible and odourless. So no matter how careful a smoker thinks they're being, the likelihood is that they're causing harm to somebody around them. More than 1 in 10 babies in England born to a mother who smoked throughout her pregnancy. And in some areas, this is as high as 1 in 4. Babies born to mothers who smoke are twice as likely to die from sudden infant death syndrome and it also increases the risk of complications in pregnancy and the child developing a number of conditions later in life, such as premature birth, low birth weight, ear, nose and throat problems, respiratory conditions, obesity and diabetes. It's important that we understand the scale of the problem. Tobacco addiction is a disease and when we think of diseases, we see it as a problem which is treatable. Tobacco addiction can be treated with the right support. The World Health Organization says tobacco is the single greatest cause of preventable death, disability, illness and social inequality. Half of all smokers will die prematurely due to smoking. So, what can we do to tackle this? To reach a smoke-free society by 2030, the National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training developed the notion of very brief advice. Very brief advice has been designed around well-known behaviour change models and is designed to deliver effective advice without taking up too much time or harm in relationships with smokers. 
It's a simple form of advice that's designed to be used opportunistically in less than 30 seconds in almost any consultation with a smoker. Smokers are almost twice as likely to try to stop smoking when offered support, compared with just being told to stop. The odds of quitting are 68% higher if stop smoking medication is offered and 217% higher with offer of support. Very brief advice works on three key principles. Ask, advise and act. First, you ask smokers about their tobacco use. Next, you advise smokers that the best method of quitting is with a combination of medication and behavioural support. And finally, you act by supporting them with their quit attempt where you can make an appropriate referral to the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service. This should take no longer than 30 seconds. When we're asking the smoker about their smoking status, it's important to remove the stigma and engage in a conversation about smoking itself. It's important at this stage to assess and understand the current and past smoking behaviour of the smoker and a very good time to help the smoker think about their smoking and a good opportunity to ask open questions. Some examples of open and closed questions are Closed Do you enjoy smoking? Open How do you feel about your smoking? Closed Don't you know smoking is bad for you? Open How do you think smoking affects your health? Closed Shouldn't you stop smoking? Open. Why do you think you continue to smoke? After you've asked the smoker about their status and you've assessed their current and past smoking behaviour, it's then important to advise them on the best way to stop smoking and inform them about the benefits of quitting. You can relay simple facts and figures to them like the ones listed on the timeline here. This is also the ideal opportunity to advise them that they are three times more likely to quit with the correct support in place from a smoking cessation service like Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus. Stop and smoking can have an impact not only on the individual, but on their family, friends or employer. Here are some of the potential benefits to stop and smoking. Smoking causes premature wrinkles. Quitting keeps you looking younger. Giving up smoking stops brown teeth and bad breath. People who've quit smoking feel less stressed. Your breathing and general fitness will improve. Your sense of taste will return and you'll enjoy the taste of food more. Your fertility levels will improve along with your chances of having a healthy pregnancy and baby. Quitting smoking increases your sex drive. Finally, time to act. If a smoker is motivated to stop, refer to the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service who will explain the range of options and work directly with them. If a smoker does not want to stop or is not ready to stop yet, give written information to take away, which includes the number of the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service. Suggest they contact when they're ready to stop. It's important to recognise that you shouldn't be afraid to ask about smoking status. Most smokers expect to be asked and many will be surprised if you are not advising them about the best way of quitting. In fact, not discussing smoking could lead them to think that this is not something you're concerned about and therefore neither should they be. As very brief advice is a 30 second conversation, it can be used again and again. Just because someone declined support a year ago doesn't mean that they'll feel the same now. Every time we ask someone about their smoking status, we're losing another opportunity to ask, advise and act. When using very brief advice, there's no need to record smoking quantity. There is no safe level of smoking, and so in many ways it doesn't really matter how many are smoked per day. All smokers need to quit. Even smoking one cigarette a day gives the smoker a 64% higher risk of an earlier death than somebody who has never smoked. The very act of you engaging in the 30 second conversation will prompt many people to make a quit attempt. And there's also some basic psychology involved. If you ask someone if they want to stop, they'll automatically start generating reasons why they shouldn't or can't stop. Very brief advice is designed so that you can cut to the chase and simply advise them of the best way of stopping smoking. Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus offers a variety of stop smoking aids and medications to help a smoker with their quit attempt. There are three approved medications to help with stop and smoking. The first is nicotine replacement therapy, which can be prescribed over the counter and is also on general sale in varying different forms, including patches and gum. These will provide the smoker with a low level of nicotine without the poisonous chemicals present in tobacco smoke, 
In addition to this, there are two prescription-only medicines that are also available. These are most commonly referred to as Champix and Zyban. All of the medications listed are most effective in combination with behavioural support, which is delivered by specially trained Stop Smoking practitioners within the Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service. They'll get to know you and find out what support you want with Quitin. It's also important to note that, although not a medication, the utilisation of e-cigarettes have also been found to assist with quit attempts. E-cigarettes have been shown to be effective cessation aids and are estimated to be at least 95% less harmful than smoking. To account for the diversity in product design, some researchers have classified e-cigarettes as first, second or third generation devices. A first generation e-cigarette is one that closely resembles a cigarette and is disposable. A second generation e-cigarette is a larger, usually pen-shaped device that can be recharged. A third generation e-cigarette refers to devices that do not resemble a combustible cigarette and often have very large and sometimes customizable batteries. More recently, e-cigarettes that have a sleek, high-tech design and easily rechargeable batteries have entered the market including e-pipes and e-cigars. With such a large variety of choice available, a lot of people ask, What's the best treatment and what should be recommended? Currently, around half of all smokers in England try to quit unaided using willpower alone, despite this being the least effective method. Using nicotine replacement therapies or e-cigarettes makes it one and a half times as likely a person will succeed. A person's chances of quitting are doubled if they use a prescribed stop smoking medicine like Champix. However, when a combination of stop smoking aids along with expert support from Stop Smoking Service is put in place for the smoker, it makes them three times as likely to quit smoking compared to using willpower alone. Therefore, the best advice you can give a smoker is to refer them to their local Stop Smoking Service to give them the very best chance of stopping compared to any other method. When supporting pregnant smokers, it's important to recognise that nicotine replacement therapy is perfectly safe and recommended as an alternative to smoking. However, it's not currently recommended that prescription medications, such as Champix or Zyban, are offered during pregnancy. Smoke and prevalence is much higher among people with poor mental health when compared to the general population. However, they are just as likely to want to quit smoking and are just as motivated to quit. However, it's important to note that smokers with mental health issues may sometimes have difficulty monitoring themselves to do even the most basic of tasks let alone a major health behaviour change like stop and smoking. Therefore, they should be considered for a broader range of tailored treatments and other approaches such as advice to cut down before stopping and other additional behavioural and emotional support options. People with depression should also be closely monitored when stop and smoking and should be advised not to take Champix or Zyban whilst also being advised to see their GP if they experience any anxiety or other behavioural changes. The following clip is taken from the NCSCT and it demonstrates how to use the knowledge you have gained today and apply very brief advice in a real-life situation. 30 seconds is all it would have taken to follow three simple steps. Ask, okay. advise now. and act. Ah, oh, Mr Jackson, are you still smoking? Yeah, yes I am unfortunately. With the new baby, I'd, you know, I'd love to First, up, but... ask your patients and establish and record their smoking status. This won't spoil your relationship. Most patients expect to be asked and are happy to talk about it. Next, advise. Well, listen, obviously the choice is entirely yours, but we now know that the best way to stop smoking is a combination of support and treatment, which are available on the NHS. Advise them that the most successful way to stop is with NHS support and medication. You're not just doing it on your own. Do you think that's something that might interest you? Yeah. Sure. And finally, act. If you have an in-house stop smoking advisor, suggest they make an appointment. We have a nurse here who is an expert in health. Alternatively, refer them to the local stop smoking service where they can receive specialist support. Do you want to make an appointment? Yeah. Why not? Good. Let's do it. Brilliant. Okay. okay, well you let me know how you get on. Thanks. Alright. Bye-bye. It's never too late to change someone's life. I have an appointment tomorrow at 9.30. Health professionals are listened to in a way that's unique. Do you have an appointment card? Yeah. 30 seconds is all it takes. 
to ask, advise, and act to inspire someone to stop smoking for good. The Newcastle Stop Smoking Plus service offer advice and tailored support for those looking to begin their stop smoking journey. We are open to Newcastle residents. To make a referral, you can contact us via telephone, via email, or you can visit our website. You can also contact us via Twitter and through our Facebook account.